Come on, beloved church. Everybody stand up with me. Praise God. You all knew I was going to do it. You all knew I was going to do it. You're like, I knew you was going to ask us to stand up again. Praise God. First of all, let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. You're not going to hell. Hallelujah. We are eternal. Praise God. God is on your side. He's head over heels in love with you. There is not one thing wrong with you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There is not one thing wrong with you in Jesus' name. Amen. There is not one thing wrong with you in Jesus' name. All right? Amen. Amen. It's all because of here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, let's give our praise and worship team a round of applause. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I'll tell you right now. I, I, was, uh, I was talking to leadership and I was just, uh, you guys may be seated. And I was, I was, I was just bragging on. I was boasting on the Lord Jesus. You guys have to understand this. I was just boasting on our God. And whenever you come across a brother and sister that just surrenders completely to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you could just see how Holy Spirit. Say his name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. You could just see how Holy Spirit works through them. It shines through them. Amen. And I was talking to leadership this morning. And I was, I was just worshiping God and just boasting on our praise and worship team. Amen. That we don't know the distractions that they go through. And I encourage you to keep them all lifted up in prayer. Praise God. Because as you guys know, their jobs are to usher in the presence. Amen. The Holy Spirit. Their jobs are through song and through worship to just sing a sweet, sweet praises to Lord Jesus Christ. And hopefully, hopefully, say with me, I allow, I allow. God to come in and break things away. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let, let, let's allow God to just break everything away. Amen. How many, of you, how many of you believe with all your heart that Lord Jesus Christ is coming back soon? Amen. Amen. All right. Praise God. Half the room. Don't be concerned because half of us are going and half are staying. It just got serious up in here. Huh? Right? But of course, I pray in Jesus' name that all, say it with me, everybody. Everybody's going to go. Praise God. I know I know that's a big request, but I serve a big God. Amen. And I, and I just thank God. Hallelujah. Before we open up a prayer like we always do, I just want to say... Welcome home, amen, and um, once again, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come out, to come to church. I need you to hear this, because this means this much to God when you know the price that was paid on that cross to have you as a beloved child, to have you as a child of His, and now Holy Spirit lives in you, and now you are accountable, say that word will be accountable, you are accountable as a child of God to come, right? But guess what? Not everybody chooses to come. Not everybody chooses to say, I'm getting up this morning. And no matter how the kids act, no matter how the, hu how the husband acts, right? No matter what comes, Brother Chris, I'm coming to church. Amen? And it's so great to see you. Amen? Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. So before we open up a prayer, Holy Spirit wanted to explain something. And I said, I said to God, this is new. And God says, I'm doing a new thing. Amen. Say with me, a new thing. And we are going to go fast, but the beauty is Holy Spirit showed me this week, and especially the last couple of nights in preparation of this message, that God said that today we would have umpteen numbers of children in the service. Right? Now I'm going to ask all the kids, amen, stand up on the chairs. Praise God. Children, stand up on the chairs. Let me do it, let me do it gooder than this. If you're under... If you're under the age of 16, sit, stand on the chair. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, do what I'm saying. Look at the church. Amen. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God praise. This is the youth. This is, oh, glory to God, the chosen generation. Amen. And look at that. They're here. They're smiling. They're having a good time. And praise God. I pray that this worship service blesses everybody, the Holy Spirit told me that there was going to be a record-breaking amount of youth. Like PJ said, look around, right? Look at all the kids that are around, amen? 
So this is what Holy Spirit wanted to show real quickly now. In devotion, in worship, and how God dealt with me, Pastor John says it all the time. Amen. Anyone who, who shares the word, especially as a mouthpiece, you know God deals with you first. Amen. 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 And I pray that you know nobody, nobody that stands before you as a mouthpiece, nobody preaches something that they don't live. Amen. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, you rebuke that. You know why? That's a wolf. That's a wolf. Right? They can talk a good game, but they don't live by Holy Spirit fruit. Amen? Say with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Teach us how to live. This is what God wanted to show real quickly. We're going to be in the book in 1 Corinthians. And when the Apostle Paul was writing to the church of Corinth. Now the church of Corinth, you guys got to keep, keep in mind and understand. This is a hustle bustle city now. This, this is, I mean, you want to talk about... I mean, you just want to talk about all things going on, diversity and everything else. There's a lot of things going on within this church. And God wanted to speak of this. And if we were only going to go from chapter 3, verse 9 through 14. But if you notice that, that, that arrow, God said, I want you to talk about that. And that's going to be the foundation of what we are going to be worshiping in. Of course, Lord Jesus Christ, say with me, Agape. Hey. Agape is our foundation. Who is Agape? Hallelujah. He is our God Almighty. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You cannot break the Godhead apart. It is from the pit of hell. If you try to say, I want Jesus, but I don't want Holy Spirit, you're going to hell. You're going to hell. If you say you want Jesus, but you don't want Holy Spirit, you're going to hell. This is the written word of God, and God is... Amen. Now you can't say that I want God and I want to be spiritual, but I don't want Jesus. You're going to hell. Right? Listen, we live in a time now, family, that we may not even walk out of here. That that trumpet may, hallelujah, that that trumpet might go off and we're going to be with Jesus. Amen? I cannot tell you otherwise. But I can't tell you this way. That's a lie from the pit of hell. And this is what we were going to 
go through in Ephesians just to insert that into the church in Ephesus. And in this church in Ephesus, the same thing was taking place, however, their religion was starting to creep up. Right? Religion. Idol works. Right? Not a relationship with Christ, a relationship with the law that was already dead in God because it was fulfilled for through the perfect one. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. Already paid for it. And then, already paid for it. So here in Apostle Paul is reminding the church in Ephesus what's going on, right? So then, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, 19 through, it's supposed to be 22, but if you notice, there's another arrow. And I said, Father God, okay, so there's two books, two churches that you want us to get into for your holy church, Open Arms Community Church, amen? Open Arms Community Church. And I said, well, Father, is this it? And then Father God said, no, it gets gooder and gooder. That's what God said, it gets gooder and gooder. I said, okay, more abundantly. What is it? He said this. I want my written word. I want the red letters. I want what my beloved perfect son, the Holy One, said. And I want you to go to the gospel. And I said, okay, Lord, we're going to the gospel. So we're going to start in Matthew 12, 36, 37. And I said, is that good, Lord? He goes, no. I want it to go in between as the foundation. Say that with me, foundation. foundation. Say it good, a cornerstone. Say it good, Lord Jesus Christ. How many carpenters do we have in the, in the room today? Praise God. Look around the little church. We got Pastor back there. We got Brother William. Amen. How important is it, carpenters, sons of God, how important is it for that cornerstone to be the stone? Amen. Very. Amen. The foundation. Amen. So then check this out. You see the arrow. We're going to go in between John 15, 7. And then we're going to tie everything up because it just gets gooder and gooder. We're going to go into the Old Testament. We're going to go into the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs is the book of wisdom. The book of Kings. Hallelujah. How many of you want wisdom? Oh, Lord Jesus Christ, bless us with your wisdom. Not manly wisdom. Amen. Amen. I want God's presence in my life to give me wisdom. Amen. Let's pray. Praise God. Heavenly Father. Oh, Father God, I can just feel your Holy Spirit flowing through your holy church, Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, as we plead your holy and precious blood, Lord Jesus, you are the only one worthy. You are the only holy one. And Lord Jesus Christ, we only go through you. We don't go through any man, any religion. Father, we, we rebuke all that. We only receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. And Holy Spirit, as we bless your holy and precious name, we bless your presence. Holy Spirit, I thank you right now that your light shines through every one of your beloved children like never before on this glorious day. Father, thank you. Thank you, Father God, for all the little ones that you have, have brought in, Father. And I pray that, that your anointing, Father God, floods every heart and renews every mind. So, Father, as we bind up every foul thing, in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ, through your holy blood, we know, Father God, that Satan, he is running away with all his demons. And Father God, I believe and declare that every ear is open to hear your word and every mind, Father God, is renewed through your holy presence. And it's in Jesus Christ's name. And all God's beloved said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God bless you, God. Keep on praying. Amen. 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 Praise God. We're going to go fast. Hallelujah. Some of you are like, yeah, right. Okay. Step here. In the Gospel, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 36, 37, the Lord Jesus Christ says, But I tell you that everyone, who is that now? Everyone. When God says everyone, that means every soul, will have to give account on the day of judgment for every empty word that they have spoken. For by the words, by the words, by your words, by the words that come out of your mouth, by your words, you will be acquitted. There's other translations that said you will be set free. Amen. How many of you have said, Lord Jesus Christ? Show hands. Show God your hand. Right there, God has set you free. Hallelujah. For all of eternity, you are His. Lord Jesus Christ paid for you. You are His. Amen. But then check this out. And by your words, you will also be condemned. Amen. You see, we live right now in a condition in this fallen world that there is a spirit of 
of offense is the devil. It's the devil. The spirit of offense is Satan himself. When, when the devil has deceived you, listen beloved church family, when the devil has deceived you that your very identity is based on your last name, when the devil has deceived you that your very identity is based on how you look, when the devil has deceived you that your identity is based on the color, and you actually buy into that, when the devil has deceived you that now all you do is argue with people that wear and don't, oh, are we preaching today? If the devil has come into your heart to deceive you, to, to make you believe that that is your identity, you will start speaking words that actually bring condemnation to yourself. And glory to God, say it with me, no more. No more. Say it like you mean, no more. No more. See, your identity as I look at you, beloved children of God, holy children of God, some of you are saying, why you call me holy? Brother, you don't know what, you don't know what I've done. But I thank God that that is dead and gone. And it's all because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So the question is, is Jesus Christ the Lord? Is Jesus Christ the Lord? Because if you sit there and you say yes, hallelujah. If you sit there, you stand there and you say, yes, he is my Lord, then what you're saying is, you are now property of God. And that your value, you are, say with me, my value, my value. is in the Holy One. Hallelujah, what's his name? Hallelujah, praise God, let's move on. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field. Hallelujah, say with me, God's building. God's building. Say with me, open arms for Church. Open arms for Church. Hallelujah, we are God's building, praise God. By the grace God has given me, I laid the foundation as wise builders. Hallelujah. Who is the wise builder? Who is the holy carpenter? Who is the only one? Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And look at this. And someone else is building on it. I pray in Jesus' name when you leave here today, that you have such an anointing from God, that you allow the Holy Spirit to not only speak to you. Because I'm going to tell you right now, this is a bold statement. I've said it before, I'm going to say it right now. God speaks to everyone. Holy Spirit speaks to everyone. That's more than everybody now. Even the ones, believe it or not, even the ones that are running away from Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit is chasing them now. Even the ones, even, I know many of us, how many of you got family that don't want to receive Lord Jesus? Show hands. Beloved church, family, look around. The only reason why Holy Spirit says He wants you to look around is there should be no reason why we're not always in prayer. Amen? God has, God has a lot of souls that He still wants to save before the time comes, right? But I pray that God is going to be the one that starts building in your life. That He's the one building in your life. Say His name, Holy Spirit. But each one should build with care. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid. What is that foundation? I got it on my shirt. Say it with me. The foundation is on God alone. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We are made in God's image. Guess what? We have a soul, right? We have a spirit. And we live in this body. Amen? We are made, hallelujah, we are made in His image. Which means that if there's something coming against your body, can I get an amen? amen? If there's something coming against your, back, your body, whether it's a bad back, whether it's a bad medical report, whether the blood pressure is not, not in line, whether there's cells right now in your body that's working against the temple of God, whatever is going on in your body, we're made in His image so that we no longer look at this body, we look at this body in Jesus' name. Amen? We look at we look at the body of Holy Spirit Christ. Amen? See, there's many of you right now that are going to that because you said, Holy Spirit, I needed that word. Holy Spirit, I needed that word because I've been far too long dealing with
with this, with this thorn in my side. That Father God, I'm no longer going to allow the thorn in my side to be a distraction that makes it become a God in my life. I'm now going to take that thorn and I'm going to say, I thank you, Father God, that I don't live in this body. I live in your body for all of eternity. Amen? Hallelujah. If anyone builds on this foundation, that's what God made, using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, this is where we're going to get through. May I go down there? Praise God. It's like SeaWorld now. You're going to be in the splash zone. You know, this message, children, listen. It's about three little pigs. But what God just demonstrated right now that you saw, there are things that happen in our life that the test is, how will you react? Right? Are you going to, are you going to allow the worry? Are you going to allow the distraction? Are you going to allow whatever it is to take a hold of you? And will you allow your mind to start getting away from the Lord and start having depression and worry? And start getting anxious? You see, this is what the devil wants us to do. Because he knows that when we become anxious and worry, we start stepping out of the will of God. What is God's will? Just give thanks for Lord Jesus. Let me say that again. What's God's will for your life? Because I have this question a lot. Say it with me. Give thanks to Lord Jesus. Amen. Give thanks to Lord Jesus Christ. This is God's will. Let's read First Thessalonians chapter 5. And he will say it completely from the beginning to end, Sister Hannah. God's will for your life is just be thankful. But if you choose not to be thankful, guess what? You, say what you mean. Me. Say what you mean. I. I. You have the power to say, God, I know what you've done told me so that I can live the gooder and gooder life. But you know what? I choose not to be thankful and I'm going to be crunchy. And it's the moment when you get into this, right? Listen, God just displayed that I give all the glory to God, right? It doesn't matter if the computer goes off, if we lose everything. It don't matter. You know what? We're still going to worship Lord Jesus, right? Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter. Amen. Does it matter, church? No, it doesn't. So when we talk about wood, hay, or straw, this is what God brought us to, is the three little pigs. Now, I'm going to ask the children to help me out. Adults, you can help me out, too. But the last time I checked, how many of you know the story of the three little pigs? Quite a bit of you, praise God. I did it. Just like last week, I didn't know Monopoly. I didn't play that. You don't play that in the hood. <laughs> oh, I didn't like that. <laughs> and just like three little pigs, I didn't know the story. So when Holy Spirit said this was the message, I actually had to go, Sister Charlotte, and read three little pigs. So from what I know, please correct me if I'm wrong. Children, correct me if I'm wrong. But what took place is that these three little pigs finally got old enough where they had to move out the house. And when they moved out the house, they, they were told that you need to build your own house now. Amen? You need to build your own house. And they had two of the, two of the little pigs, they just like to goof off. They just like to goof off and just play games, and they were lazy. They were lazy. So one pig was like, ha, ha, yeah, let's just play all day long. Let's just play all day long. William, come on, you don't need to do that. Let's just play. And, and for an example, William, come up here with me. <laughs> so we're just going up. I'm here just having such a good time, right? We're just having such a good time. William, you don't need to work. You don't need to work. And so, so I, I mean the goofy one, the goofier one, I let too. Obviously, that's really the case, truly. Uh, he said, yeah. I say, William, come on. I, I'm just going to go ahead and build my house real quick. Because I remember what Daddy told us. I'm going to build it real quick, all right? I'm going to build my house, okay? So all I did is I just picked up straw and hay. Okay? I picked up straw and hay. Just on the ground, I just scooped it up, and I built the house. Well, there goes my house. Okay? There goes my house. Right? I love it. The kids are like, okay, I get you, I get you. And then, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, say with me, all of a sudden, this big, this big, let me in, let me in. Now children, this is what I need you to say. Not by the hairs. Oh, that was really good. Hey, can we do it again? Let me in, let me in. 
happened to Joseph's house, right? Now let's go to Brother Williams, because remember, Brother William liked to goof off too. He may be sitting there acting good right now, but he wanted to goof off like I did. But the thing about Brother William, though, is that when Brother Joey went to just go ahead and grab a bunch of straw and hay, right? Just garbage and put it all together. Brother William was a little bit smarter, but he was also lazy, Brother Randall. He was still lazy. He got scraps of pallet. Still lazy. Scraps of pallet, and this is what he got. Here's Brother William. <laughs> You're so cute, Brother William. Look at you. <laughs> and Brother William, he built his house. And then what happened, children? What happened? Let me in. Let me in. Oh, uh, listen, if I'm the wolf, I don't hear you right now. Let me in. Let me in. Oh, what happened? 
happens when God says, listen, God was warning the church of Corinth that if you continue to go based on your work, now remember, we discussed this earlier, they went away from the redemption that only comes through Lord Jesus Christ and they started adopting religion. They started adopting works of the law. They started adopting these other things that took them away from salvation that only comes through Lord Jesus Christ. And here God is saying, your work will be exposed because I will bring it to light. See, right now, there's testing going on all throughout this world with all this that's going on. Right? There's all this testing taking place in every household of yours. There's, there's all this... There's, I'm telling you right now, beloved church family, listen. The way this devil is running rapid right now, he's trying to get into your mind and trying to consume you with all this that's going on in the world. All God is saying, will you just thank me for how much I love you because Lord Jesus Christ already came. He already died. And he already rose again. Amen? Amen? If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, and I love how it points down to that agave cornerstone, their work will be shown. And this is what God already said. Praise God. You are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. Say with me, his house. His house. So how many as you sit there today, right now, how many of you know that where you sit right now, God divinely orchestrated for your tail to be seated in that chair? So most of everybody believes that, amen? And if you don't, I, I'll pray for you because it's the truth. God divinely orchestrates every step. Every step. Every step. There's no coincidence. Coincidence is a word from the pit of hell. Our God orchestrates everything. He is God Almighty, amen? So when I say this, listen. When we say that we are God's house, God's people, God's church, amen? The question remains is, I want you to examine right now your house, your family. You don't have to be married, you have children, guess what, that's your house. You may be single and not have any children, guess what, it starts with your relationship, amen? And God right now wants you to examine your heart and your life. The apostles... Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief say with me cornerstone. Say with me cornerstone. Cornerstone. Hallelujah. One more time. One more time. Don't get lazy on me. Who is agape? Amen. And this is what this cornerstone represents. Why, Brother Joey, why? Why always? Why in every message, Pastor John? Why in every message, open arms to be church? Why in every message you have to call out agape? You have to say, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You know why? There are people worshiping Lord Jesus Christ without Holy Spirit. That's from the pit of hell. Amen. There are people who say they have the Holy Spirit without Lord Jesus Christ. That is a demon. Say it, it's a demon. God has to hear it from your mouth. It's a demon. We're in spiritual warfare right now, family. And the only one that can save you and protect you from whether it's a virus, whether it's from chaos, the bottom line from this evil and this devil is Daddy Almighty. Amen? And you've got to call his name. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ, amen. So we're going to take a little short break here, praise God. And this is what Lord Jesus Christ had to say. If you, if you is almost like therefore, therefore, if you means the decision, the choice is yours. That's why I put those question marks up there, okay? If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. How awesome of a life is it that when you can have a relationship with God through worship, that God, how many of you believe that God knows your heart before you even say anything? Amen. See, there's many of you right now that are sitting here believing for a child. I'd be a fool to say that everybody is saved in this room.
There's some of you that just came because you were drug here. God divinely orchestrated for you to be here. Right now, Holy Spirit is knocking on the door of your heart, and I pray this. And this is why God wanted us to take this break real quick. My words remain in you. So the question is, do you believe that there is a God? Do you believe that there's a devil? You know what I love? Especially here lately, there has been a lot of souls receiving the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise for that. Just within our little community of Lebanon, Kentucky, brother, just in our little community, there's a lot of people finally coming to their senses. I'm going to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what? It's amazing to me because it takes this distraction of the devil with all this chaos going on in this world that you have to come to the realization that is there a devil? You see, atheism is one of the most ignorant things in the world because right there in that statement, you acknowledge that there was a God, you just choose not to believe. Atheism is one of the most ignorant statements because I'm an atheist. You just said that you, there is a God, you just choose not to believe. How ignorant is that? So the opening that God gives us as His holy church, as children of God, is when you have family members, Many of you earlier raised your hand and say, I am believing for a family member that doesn't know Jesus. Guess what? God gave you a platform right now to just say, well, since you don't believe in my Jesus, that means you don't believe that there's a devil. Well, I didn't say that. Well, wait a minute. You can't believe in the devil, not Jesus. So now you're telling me you believe in a devil, but you're just choosing not to believe Jesus. Don't put words in my mouth. I didn't put words in your mouth, Crunchy. You just said you don't believe in my Jesus and you don't believe in God. But you but then again when I say, is there evil in this world? Do you think this coronavirus is bad? Yeah, I think it's horrible. Oh wait, it's right there. So what is horrible? The devil? Evil? Amen. Right? Sometimes you gotta do that. Oh. <laughs> you, ever, you ever do that when you love on somebody and try to help them out? Right? And when it comes to that point, when it comes to that point when that realization is there is a devil, guess what? God says, I got it from here. You have no idea how many people, especially teenagers, oh, because teenagers, they know everything. Teenagers know everything. Can't tell them nothing. So there's so many times in a conversation with a teenager, I'll say, okay, so you don't believe in my Jesus, you think that I'm just excited for some imaginary being, okay, so you believe that there is no devil. <coughs> ah, I didn't say that, there, there is a devil, there is evil. Okay, so I'm going to leave you on this point. You just said that there is Satan, and there's somebody that is in charge that nobody can come against, and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to leave you with that thought. See, right now, Holy Spirit is charging every one of you that said, I have family that, that if God comes back in this next half an hour, they're not going. They're going to be left behind. God right now is giving you and equipping you with ways that you can reach out to them. I'm asking you, beloved church, will you reach out to them in the name of Jesus? And they don't have to come here to open our community church. Guess what? We're one church in Christ. And the Holy Spirit is our God. The Holy Spirit right now is grabbing all the souls that belong with Christ. It's called His body. And God right now is assembling them. Will you do God a favor? Will you do God a favor and reach out to your family and friends that you have a relationship with and ask them? Ask, if you will, will you stand up for the Lord? Not everybody's going to stand up. I know. But will you stand up for the Lord?
and watch what God's going to do miraculous through you, miraculously through your back, through your knees, through your bones, everything in Jesus' name. But you stood up for the Lord and said, I will, Father. I will reach out to my family. Because I am not going to allow them to make this decision because the devil deceived them. Amen? Hallelujah. may be seated. Praise God. My words remain in you. Do you believe that the perfect one, the only Son of God, His name is Lord Jesus Christ, do you believe that He came through a virgin birth, that Holy Spirit come upon Mary, and that Lord Jesus Christ was born, and that He lived His life in perfection as the only perfect one, the perfect sacrifice, the perfect offering of God Almighty? Do you believe that Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the Messiah, do you believe that He came and that He died this horrible death that, that he, did, he died this horrible death, even though he could say, you know what, I'm done with this. Stop. Kill everybody. He did it. Do you believe that? Do you believe that on that third day, that glorious third day, do you believe that God rose his perfect beloved son through the power of Holy Spirit resurrected in glory? Do you believe that? Do you believe that that same power that rose Lord Jesus Christ from the grave is alive inside you as a beloved child of God? Do you believe that? Do you believe that? See, when we say that we remain in Christ and His Word remains in us, this picture that God blessed us with as an overlay is, is as a child of God, wherever you go, you carry His Word in you. In John 1 it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. When we understand the magnitude of this Word, you are now able to speak the Word over your life. Amen? How many of us today, right now, right now, you don't have to show, you don't have to raise your hand, but how many of us today, God is really dealing with you in the way you speak? Right? You don't have to raise your hand. How many of you right now that the presence of Holy Spirit in your life, in the atmosphere right now, He's dealing with you, saying that you have the ability, the authority through Lord Jesus Christ to speak healing over your physical body. Amen. Amen. How many of you right now that as you worship Lord Jesus Christ and we're in the written word of God, that God right now is saying through your body that if you're tormented in your mind, if you're dealing with depression, if you're dealing with thoughts, that are confusion and of the devil, that God, through Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of Holy Spirit that is in you, gives you the ability to say, no more of these thoughts in Jesus' name. I choose to be thankful. Amen? Hallelujah, I choose to be thankful. Hallelujah, I choose to be thankful. Lord, with 15 of my words remain in you. As we said earlier, we're just putting everything together. Now, Holy Spirit wanted as He delivers this message. Say it with me, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. You're the teacher. You're the teacher. No man is. No man. Say it again, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Teach me. Teach. Say it with me, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I welcome you. I welcome you. Change me, Lord. Change me, Lord. How many believe that when you truly say that, that you're opening the temple of God as a child of God, you're saying, Holy Spirit, I allow you. Flow through me. Because last time I checked where the presence of God is, I'll tell you right now, the devil cannot be around. Amen. 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 When there is Thanksgiving, Sister Virginia, I'll tell you right now, the moment you open your mouth and you say, Father, I just want to say thank you for Lord Jesus. Right there. I pray that you saw it right there. You want to talk about the power of heaven. Within you, it's just like an earthquake. When you just said, I just want to thank you, Father God, for Lord Jesus Christ. All of heaven, the anointing goes out before you. And I'll tell you right now, everything foul and garbage, Sister Ashley, has to flee in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Say it with me, in him. In him. Say it like you mean, in him. In him. Man, your brother right now is almost losing his voice. He can help your brother out of these. Praise God. Stop getting religious. Let's get excited. Can I get an amen? Pastor, today's the day I get to say it. Isn't it incredible that we can go to a UK basketball game, right? And we can just act a fool, and no one would judge nobody. And if you weren't so excited, there's something wrong with you. Am I preaching? That UK basketball can be playing, and there's some of you right now that's sitting in church like this, but if UK basketball 
him all the time, you'd be like, oh, come on! You missed the shot! Pass the ball! Right? My question to you is, we need a heart to just the church. Why don't we be more excited for God and His business and put UK basketball to put it down a notch?
Amen. He is God Almighty. Praise God. Can you imagine me going on Brother Randall's farm and saying, Brother Randall, what's this doing here? Brother Randall, what's this doing here? You get this out of here. He's going to look at me like, have you lost your mind? This isn't your property. This is my property. I need that there. Um, but I don't like it.
so stupid. Can I say that? The world, the wolf is so ignorant that he climbed up on the roof, went under the chimney, and went down in the chimney. But the glory of God is, is that the pigs <coughs> built the fire. And guess what? I didn't know this part. They ate the wolf. Did y'all know that? They had wolf tacos. They ate the wolf. You think I'm making it up, but they ate the wolf. The wolf fell in on a point, and they cooked it, and they ate it. Hallelujah. How about they instantly revealed Satan? And this is where we're closing, as we said earlier, Proverbs 18, 21. The tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Family, as you know, our Holy Spirit has been teaching us. It all started as far with our identity in Christ when we received the perfect sacrifice. When we call on Lord Jesus to make him our Lord and Savior, I need you to say this with me, I died in Christ. See, Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified in Christ. It's not I that live, I live through Christ. Amen. Amen. Say with me, I live through Christ. I live through Christ. When we know this, we now have an accountability. We open it up in the book of Matthew. That we are held accountable by God Almighty by the words we speak. You see, I could preach to you all day long about the power of God and His name is Holy Spirit. And how Holy Spirit resides in every one of you as long as you have received Jesus Christ as Lord. And see, it's one thing to know that, okay, I have access to this power as a Christian, as a child of God. I have access to this power in a relationship with my Father God. I have access through this power in prayer and thanksgiving to Lord Jesus Christ. And then we also uncovered what Holy Spirit taught us not too long ago. That if you harbor unforgiveness in your life, you're actually allowing the devil to stand in the way of your relationship with God because God says, I cannot do anything with you or for you. Because I forgave everybody through my sacrifice. And there's many of you this past week, and thank you for the encouragement and many of the conversations that we have, that God has blessed you with such breakthrough because you left that unforgiveness here at this altar. But then unfortunately there are a few of you, five that I counted, three that are not here this morning, that you said, I thought I did, but guess what happened? This week, that person came to my mind and it brought me down. See, right now God is saying, enough playing games will you completely open yourself. Last time I checked, completely open yourself is being completely transparent with the Lord. See, I love this story about three little pigs and a big bad wolf, but the twist of this entire story for all of us to hear and for all these children to know is that there is no wolf. There is no wolf. If you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you have Holy Spirit God Almighty living in you on the inside, the devil wants nothing to do with you. The devil is actually the one that is fearful because of the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. You see, I don't have this scripture up here, but I know why, because Holy Spirit said, I want you to call it out right now. But when you look at Proverbs chapter 12, write it down. If you look at Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18, remember this is the book of wisdom now, Brother PJ. I want wisdom. Holy Spirit, give me wisdom. If you don't want it, as you sit there, I'll take your wisdom in Jesus' name. But what that calls out in that scripture, Proverbs 12, read it, verse 18. It says this, that if you cannot control your tongue and you just speak curses, it's like you pierce it, jabbing, doing damage. But if you speak life, it's healing and blessing. So the question is, beloved church family, before we get into the altar service and the worship music and we open up the altar to pray and just worship God, is this. We all know that in Christ, that He is our cornerstone and we have this brick house. Amen? But the question is, if 
speaking death, that's what we're doing. That the wolf, the imaginary wolf, what the devil wants you to be focusing. Oh, well, the devil did this, the devil did that. You know how many times I hear that throughout the week? And you know the glory of God is, I don't judge nobody, but all I have to do as a pastor, as a beloved son of God, is let that beloved child know, okay, I hear what you're saying. And it's true what's happening. And I can see the destruction, the, the enemy. I can see that. But who is your God? Is Jesus Christ your Lord? Yes, Jesus is my Lord. My pastor, no, don't give me a but. Because that's a big but. Don't give me a but. Is Jesus Christ your Lord? Yes, he is, pastor. Some people get mad. Some people walk away from me. But that's between them and Holy Spirit now. But if you continue to speak curses, you're leaving this door. This is a brick wall now. And you yourself, as a child of God, said, I'm just going to keep speaking the way I want. I don't care because this is the way I've always been. I was raised this way. You don't know me and what I've been through. I have the right to speak this way. This is what you're doing. And guess what? It doesn't just stay like that. What you're doing is, through speaking death, is you're saying, Satan, devils, I leave this door open, and inside this door is my family. Inside this door, my loved one. See, sometimes it takes something like this for God to just knock down walls in your heart and say, no more in Jesus' name. Amen? Say with me, no more in Jesus' name. Is in the future? Listen, there's some of us right now that are going through a season that we're believing God for miraculous healing, right? Guess what? Don't think about it no more. Just start being thankful. Because when you're thankful, beloved church family, when you're thankful for Lord Jesus Christ, Check this out. This is the Holy Spirit. Man. It gets good and good. And his angels, say with me, his angels. His angels go like this. No. No more. You ever go to a club and there's a bouncer right there? Right, big old bouncer. Right? Can you imagine how the angels look? And many of you see angels. I know. Many of you see angels. Praise God. Hallelujah. If y'all want to stand up, praise God. I pray that this word bless you today. I know it did because it's Holy Spirit's word. Amen. I'm not the teacher. Like Pastor and I say, we're not worthy, we're not smart enough. It's all by the grace of God, the Holy Spirit. Call us to do what we do, amen. And we do it in fear of God and God alone. We don't fear nothing else, amen. Say when we fear nothing else. Say with me, I only fear God. Amen. See, the beauty is that you said that right now, Holy Spirit said, Whoa! Say it again. I only fear God. I only fear God. What is this fear that God is asking you to have complete reverence and surrender is? How much He loves you? How much He loves you? It's not a fear of control. You know why? Fear doesn't put control. When you fear God and how much He loves you, it's His perfect love that overflows. That you want nothing but his control in your life. Amen. 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 I pray in Jesus' name that as we come to the altar, beloved church family, as we always do, can you be a part, can you be a part of blessing God today on this glorious day? This isn't just another altar call. I rebuke them. We never approach this altar that way. That Father God, when I take that step out, that Father God, I thank you that as I take that step out to come to your altar, I will never be the same. Will you take that step out like Peter stepped out of that boat? Amen. How will you take that step out? Will you take that step out and say, Father, here I am. I just want to worship you. Amen? 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 Amen. Amen.